BTS is a crazily successful South Korean boy band, best-selling artists in South Korean history, numerous that were... Oh, sorry, it's not BTS, it's BTC I'm supposed to talk about. Let me try again. An anonymous creator, 77 lines of code, market cap of 580 billion, the all-time high price of $69,000, first on the cryptocurrencies list and millions of followers the world over. The digital gold, the first cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. This is exactly what it is today in 2022. However, we seem to forget that all this was preceded by a 13 years long journey. Now the Cryptus team is about to show and tell you about the path of that very cryptocurrency to which we owe just under everything that exists in the crypto space. By the end of this video, the whole story of the predominant cryptocurrency in history will be revealed to you. You're watching Crypto Stories. It's me, Kirill, at the mic, so put the kettle on and get comfy in your seat. We have a lot to tell you about. Think of the Bitcoin's history as a timeline. Where does it begin? In 2008, you might say. But that is not exactly right. Fundamentally, Bitcoin is a product of 40 years of studies by cryptographers and other scientists around the globe. So we can say that it all started in 1983, when David Chalm and Stephen Brands came up with the first protocols of electronic cash. And in 1997, another researcher, Adam Back, put forward the hash hash system based on what we call proof of work. This system was intended for fighting spam and DOS attacks. Another person that deserves credit is Wei Dai who in 1998 outlined the concept of cryptocurrency called B-Money, which being crude and in low demand was never released. But even back then in some respects, B-Money was very similar to Bitcoin. 10 years later, on August 18, 2008, an anonym starts a website called Bitcoin.org and on October 31st, somebody named Satoshi Nakamoto publishes a nine-page white paper by the name of Bitcoin Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System. Just two months later, on January 3rd, 2008, Satoshi creates the fundamental and the first so-called Genesis block and receives 50 Bitcoin on his wallet. Besides being the first ever, this block has another hallmark, an inscription incorporated in it. And it goes like this. The Times, the 3rd of January 2008. Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. To this day, it's hard to answer the question of why Nakamoto did that, except ask Satoshi himself, which does not seem to be possible. There are special websites and a bunch of theories regarding that mysterious message. According to some analysts, the message is connected with the global financial crisis of 2008, but it's just a speculation. But the fact is that nine days after the Genesis block is created, the first ever transaction in the Bitcoin network takes place. The amount of 10 BTC gets transferred from Satoshi Nakamoto to a computer scientist Hal Feeney, who had created the second node of the network two days before and then proceeded to mine Bitcoin afterwards. Nine months later, on October 5th, 2009, New Liberty Standard sets up the first ever Bitcoin to dollar exchange rate. Just the idea of being able to buy 1300 BTC for $1 back then causes huge FOMO in the present. Because if you calculate how much you would earn by holding Bitcoin, the price would swell by $41 million with only $1 of investment. But back then, Bitcoin was a diamond covered with dust that no one would notice, so not everyone managed to make a great deal of money on that. In May 2010, the first Bitcoin bargain takes place, when something actual and physical was bought for Bitcoin. And I think you've already guessed that that was that very Bitcoin Pizza Day, a meme holiday which Bitcoin community has been celebrating every year on May 22nd. 10,000 Bitcoin was the sum that Laszlo Hanye paid for a couple of Papa Jones pizzas. This story does sound sad, and it's not just because someone paid $300 million for two pizzas by today's standards. It's that Laszlo was that same person who made a program that allowed mining Bitcoin using GPU, instead of the then conventional CPU mining. His software was so effective that Satoshi wrote him a personal letter where he criticized his creation, stating that Bitcoin was too young for such capacities, meaning that it drove the speed of mining way up. This is the contribution that Laszlo Honey made into the development of mining, 
but the general public will only remember him as just a guy who bought a pizza for Bitcoin. Many beginner crypto enthusiasts have this concept that the code of Bitcoin is impeccable, but that's far from the truth. On August 15, 2010, a bug in the code occurs that causes a transaction of an unimaginable sum, 184 billion Bitcoin. And that's despite the fact that the network's maximum is just 21 million. The bug is almost immediately spotted and fixed by making an emergency network fork. For the record, this is not the only bug in Bitcoin's history. Well, nobody's perfect, right? The main thing is that it all got fixed pretty quickly. But let's continue our story. Meanwhile, Bitcoin market cap gets over $1 million and Slush is born, the first ever mining pool. It's 2011. Bitcoin levels with US dollar and a bit later, Time magazine publishes a prophetic article called Online Cash Bitcoin Could Challenge Governments and Banks. And in February, the infamous Silk Road company starts, which deals in all sorts of illegal activities and by using Bitcoin, gives it some bad reputation at the time. Also in 2011, Satoshi Nakamoto breaks the silence before disappearing from the public radar for a long time. In an email to one of his colleagues, he says that he now has other things to worry about and that the project is in good hands now. Soon after, Bitcoin price goes above $10 for the first time and a few weeks later, the first ever cryptocurrency theft takes place. A Bitcoin Talk forum user under the nick of All in Vain publishes a message that says, I just got hacked, any help is welcome, 25,000 BTC stolen. He goes on to say, I am totally devastated today. I just woke up to see a very large chunk of my Bitcoin balance gone. The theft occurred right after someone broke into my slush's pool account. In a moment of sheer stupidity, I did not think that maybe my whole system was compromised. I merely thought that someone brute forced my slush's pool password. We know the rule. If you know the password, you own the cryptocurrency. And now those 25,000 Bitcoin belong to someone else. November 2011 sees a network fork that brings about a peer-to-peer -peer electronic payment system called Litecoin. Its source code is a fork of a Bitcoin Core client with a few peculiar changes and improvements, like shorter block generation time, the use of various hashing mechanisms, and quicker payment processing time. But despite the technical superiority over Bitcoin, its younger brother could never take the lead even though it still works to this day and occupies the 20th place in the coin market cap top of cryptocurrencies. In the meantime, 2012 rolls around and the first cryptocurrency gets its own digital and then physical Bitcoin magazine, whose co-founders include Vitalik Buterin, the man behind Ethereum. A while later, the Bitcoin community faces the first halving and miners now make only 25 Bitcoin per block instead of 50. 2013 comes, and that's when Bitcoin is starting to take off. Another fork happens in March, caused by the incompatibility of Bitcoin Core versions 7 and 8. But despite all that, March sees Bitcoin market cap go above $1 billion, and the price of one coin reaches $100. October gets a few significant events too. A Chinese company Baidu starts accepting Bitcoin. The first official crypto mat is set up in Vancouver and Silk Road collapses. In a matter of hours, Bitcoin's price goes down from $139 to just $109. But just a month later, it goes tenfold and overcomes the mark of 1000 bucks. Now you can buy one ounce of gold with one coin. But unlike gold, Bitcoin's reputation raises many more doubts and the People's Bank of China bans Chinese financial institutions from using Bitcoin. Baidu is forced to stop accepting cryptocurrency. At the end of the year, the HODL meme is born when one of Bitcoin talk users makes a post, I am HODLing. Yes, my friend, this meme is 9 years old. Feeling old yet? On to 2014. Satoshi Nakamoto has been silent for quite a while which turns out to be good ground for investigations like Leah Goodman's, in which she claims that she has found that very Bitcoin creator, and his name is Dorian Prentice Satoshi Nakamoto, a 60-year-old American Japanese. However, as soon as her article is published, Dorian himself publicly claims that he has nothing to do with Bitcoin. 
Right after that, the real Satoshi Nakamoto writes a message on the P2P Foundation forum that says, I am not Dorian Nakamoto. This message is a landmark because to this day, nothing more has been heard from him. Later in June, a nightmare happens. One of Bitcoin's mining pools, Gash.io, reaches enough computing power to mount a 51% attack. Basically, the pool gets enough power to gain full control over the Bitcoin network, and that advantage lasts for over a week. However, on June 13th, having reached 55%, the pool willingly dials down on its hold in order to avoid losing its reputation. Sometime later, the famous cartoon The Simpsons mentions Bitcoin in one of its episodes. And at about the same time, Hal Finney dies, the man who started the second node in the network and was part of the first Bitcoin transaction. He had to live mere six months to see Microsoft accept the first cryptocurrency, which Finney had so much in common with. Rest in peace, Hal Finney. The Bitcoin community will never forget you. 2015 arrives and Bitcoin is going through a relatively quiet and calm phase. Its price is fluctuating but remains stable within two $800. The legendary 2017 is creeping in. Ah, we're never going back there, but wouldn't that be nice? Bitcoin Core gets an update to version 14 and then 15. And the number of Bitcoin related projects on GitHub is a little over 10,000. But that's not the reason this year is so exciting, of course. A number of planned forks result in the birth of several Bitcoin-related coins. Bitcoin Cash goes 25th on the top list, Bitcoin Gold 97th, and Bitcoin God, whose silly name can be found on the 4395th line. But the latter is still worth mentioning because it has transitioned to proof of stake, so much hated by Bitcoin maximalists. Technologically, Bitcoin sees a number of improvements too. Protocol add-on called SegWit comes to be that helps take some load off the network and increase its bandwidth without changing the block size. And we can help mentioning another revolutionary improvement, not just for Bitcoin, but for other cryptocurrencies as well. It's called Lightning, and it allows putting a big portion of transactions off the blockchain to have them processed in an auxiliary network. Now we know this as off-chain transactions. In general, we can say that Bitcoin is gradually improving and growing a few more lines of code. As this is happening, the attitude to it in the world of finance is changing as well. Most people don't remember 2017 so much for those technical advancements, but rather for how the price of Bitcoin was growing, first reaching $5,000, then 10, and then 20 by the end of the year. The market cap gets over $300 billion. Try as you might, but the phenomenon of cryptocurrency becomes impossible to ignore, especially when Chicago's stock market launches Bitcoin futures trading for the first time in history. But nothing lasts forever, and sooner or later, bullish trend has to give way to bearish. Which is exactly what happens as 2018 shows its nose and Bitcoin celebrates its 10th birthday. The news is that the Chinese government is intended to take strong measures against any cryptocurrency-related platforms, both within the country and overseas. As a result, Bitcoin ends at $4,000 and market cap of below $100 billion. Nevertheless, the interest of Bitcoin in the news and mass media keeps growing. In the meantime, Gary Gensler, the current head of SEC, is teaching a course in MIT where his students are studying the basics of economics and learning how it interacts with blockchain and cryptocurrencies. The course is called Blockchain and Money. It was filmed and can be found on MIT official YouTube channel. At the beginning of 2019, Bitcoin's price sags 85% to $3.5,000 to never ever go lower to this day. The biggest transaction in history gets registered. Someone transferred 112,000 Bitcoin, which was equivalent to almost a billion dollars at the time. You might say, whatever, so what? The funny part is that a transaction of a billion dollars had a fee of only three bucks and 90 cents. Sending that kind of money via conventional banking systems would cost at least 3%, which means that the fee would be about three million dollars. Such a difference couldn't but draw many people's attention, and the following year, in 2020, Cambridge University registers a hundredth million user in the Bitcoin network, 
and also states that there are 4,000 unique users in the network daily. So now, 11 years after the first Genesis block, the era of the higher crypto awareness finally begins. Here's what polls say. According to the recent research, most internet users have heard something about cryptocurrency. That's 70%. 23% have a clear idea of what it is, and 7% know nothing about it. 2020 is in full swing, and an Australian computer scientist, Craig Wright, demands that the BTC and BCH networks stop using Bitcoin's register, since he has been claiming himself to be the man behind Bitcoin. His conviction of being Satoshi is so strong that he files lawsuits against Coinbase and Kraken, accusing them of undermining perceptions of cryptocurrency. Also, the Fortune magazine mentions Bitcoin on its list of the greatest projects of today, ranking it 90th. 2020 ends with Bitcoin at $29,000. 2021 is the year when the current bulk of crypto enthusiasts join the community. On January 7th, Bitcoin reaches another all-time high of $40,000 and dominates the overall market cap by 70% with its volume of $1 trillion. Major companies like Microsoft or PayPal nodded towards crypto before, but in February something extraordinary happens and boosts Bitcoin's price from $38 to $46 and then to $57,000. Tesla, led by one of the most prominent crypto influencers of our time, releases a report saying that the company has bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin and intends to make it possible to pay for their goods with cryptocurrency. The Tesla hype and the Bitcoin hype collided and exploded into a news break big enough to give the whole thing a huge boost, over 50%. Seeing that the crypto market has grown twice in just a few months, Bianco Research reports on April 6th that the overall crypto market capitalization is now higher than that of the US banking system. On April 14th, Bitcoin reaches $64,000. It's reasonable to assume that at that point, when such huge companies start using crypto, it should be legalized in at least one country. Surprisingly enough, the first country to do that is Salvador, and its president, Naib Bukele, goes down in the history of crypto as a brave hero who opposes the old system. I would give anything to see Satoshi's face when this news reached him. But like I said, he never went back online. But you should know that there's a monument in his honor in Budapest. So if you want to pay him a visit, you know where to find him. But rumor has it that he hasn't answered a single question yet. Also, it's in 2021 when Taproot is devised. A Bitcoin update that would reduce the gas fee by integrating a multi-signature technology and make transactions more user-private, flexible, and scalable. If you want to know more about Taproot, you're welcome to watch a recent video where you can get a lot of new info and enjoy some top-notch animation from our designers and artists. The link is in the description below, so feel free to hit the thumbs up. Well, you got it. Back to the story. The community is ready to step into 2021. However, before we flip the next page of the calendar, we need to point out a few events whose impact can still be felt. It all started in September 2021, when China declared any crypto-related activity illegal, including mining, selling, buying, and even storing cryptocurrency. And that's a country which was mining over 50% of all Bitcoin in the world. Even a bunch of websites for tracking cryptocurrencies prices like CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap and TradingView get blocked on September 28th. Alibaba announces a total ban on selling any mining equipment. And in October, the Chinese government adds mining to its list of activities closed for investment. All that hits Bitcoin quite hard and it goes from $43,000 on January 1st down to $26,000 in a matter of six months. It's still early for any conclusions regarding 2022, because we need to see where it all goes before drawing the bottom line on this year. It might be a cool video for one of our New Year's videos, and you can be sure we'll make it. For now, I can just say that even though Bitcoin's price is currently at the level of July 2021, the hype around it isn't going anywhere and seems to be only increasing. I think now is the best time to figure out what Bitcoin is. A cryptocurrency? A crypto asset? Rat poison and a bubble, a scam, a speculative instrument, the currency of criminals and terrorists, the future of financial system, or just a long-living Ponzi scheme. 
All those questions are hard to answer as of now. They're both philosophical and mundane, contradictory, just like the main character of today's video. But that's what we need our minds and time for, to contemplate and wonder. So contemplate, do your own research and give your own answer to the question, what is Bitcoin? <laughs>